Hi, my name is Nick and welcome to Nick's Picks Watch Reviews, the YouTube channel where we look at watches that I would pick, I might pick, or I have picked. And today we're going to be looking at a watch that I picked, but it took a long time to pick it. It was the IWC Automatic Top Gun. And uh, the reason it took me so long to pick it is I actually have seen this watch many times in the case, but it wasn't the first time that I said, I'm going to buy that today. The first time I saw it, I said, I'm going to buy that. Um, but it wasn't going to be that day because I didn't really know anything about it. I, I just saw it and it was kind of love at first sight. It was one of those things where you see it in the case and you're like, that looks amazing. I need that in my life, but I probably should sleep on it. I shouldn't buy it today because maybe that's irrational. Maybe this is uh, something I don't need in my life. And uh, I didn't really ask the price up front. I kind of discovered the price later and was in for quite a shock because it was a thousand dollars more than some of the other IWC pilot watches that looked pretty similar, like the Mark 18 and the Spitfire, for example. But this is a ceramic case. It's a black ceramic case. And I was really drawn to it because it was black. It had high contrast uh, with the dial and it had that beautiful red text that said Top Gun. Now, being that it's an IWC and not a Hamilton, I figured that in this case, Top Gun probably meant the flight school and not the movie. If it was a Hamilton, I would assume the movie because they're always in Hollywood. Um, but in this case, it was, in fact, the flight school. And uh, it has a lot of history tied to that. But I didn't know all of that up front. I actually had to do some research on that. So I did eventually do some research and try to uncover the story behind this watch, where it came from, how the collection started. And what I found is that the collection itself started in 2007. That's when IWC started producing these Top Gun watches. And they actually take their name from the Strike Fighter Tactics Instructor Program in the U.S. Navy. However, back in 2018, IWC worked in collaboration with instructors based on the Naval Air Station Lemoore in California to create the Pilot's Watch Chronograph Edition Strike Fighter Tactics Instructor. Uh, unfortunately for us, that watch is literally only available to graduates of the Navy Fighter Weapons School, and uh, I actually didn't graduate from that school. Uh, that said, IWC did produce a limited edition homage to that watch, which was limited to 1,500 pieces. Uh, however, there's more to that Top Gun collection today. Uh, the Top Gun watches, uh, you'll notice, first of all, that they're designed with kind of robust materials like ceramic and titanium. They uh, kind of stand out amongst the pilot watches from IWC, both in materials and that general look. In fact, about that look, that case is matte black to ensure that pilots aren't going to be distracted by sunlight reflecting off their watches during flight. Also, as you think about it, ceramic and titanium are pretty corrosion resistant and can withstand humidity, salty sea air, and kind of everything that goes with uh, being on an aircraft carrier. Now, this specific example is actually pretty similar to IWC's Mark 18, but it does feature a case that's one millimeter larger, 0.4 millimeters thicker. And I know you're saying, well, you know, I can't really tell that on the wrist. Uh, maybe. But the Mark 18 is also powered by a different movement. The Mark 18 is powered by an older IWC movement, the 35111, whereas the Top Gun is powered by the newer 32110. And as a result of the newer movement, the Top Gun actually offers 32 hours more power reserve with 72 hours of power reserve versus 40. Now, maybe as you were looking at the Top Gun, you weren't even thinking about the Mark 18. You were thinking about the Spitfire, which it kind of also looks like as well. Um, the Spitfire actually has the same movement, but the Spitfire is noticeably smaller and it's a little bit slimmer. So it's uh, it's going to be 39 millimeters in diameter with a 10.8 millimeter height. So you get uh, a case height that's 0.6 millimeters thinner with the Spitfire, uh, but also you're, you're losing two millimeters of case diameter. So if you have a smaller wrist, then hey, maybe the Spitfire is for you, uh, unless you're in it for the materials, in which case only the Top Gun is going to be offered with that ceramic case, titanium case back, and then of course that beautiful matching black NATO. Now, the NATO itself is pretty exceptional in its execution. It features a leather backing and leather reinforcement around the holes. Uh, you know, as I'm using it, it kind of makes me nervous to wear uh, just because it, it seems like it's trying to be so special. Uh, but in terms of its wear, it wears very comfortably. Um, it does have an especially thick material, which does make it fairly difficult to change, which is a shame because, you know, it's 20 millimeters. It's that perfect width. And I have a collection of NATO straps just begging to be put on this. And uh, with how thick this one is, it's kind of annoying to, to change out. But I might have to change it out because, I again, I feel kind of weird wearing this when it's trying to be so special. Now, one of my hesitations for this watch, besides the price, was also the case material. 
I had never had a ceramic watch before, and I wasn't really sure how is ceramic going to hold up? Is it going to chip? Uh, I understand it's scratch resistant. That's great. But ultimately, I don't really care so much about scratches. I mean, I don't like the look of them. I definitely want to fix them when I can. Um, but uh, I don't really care so much because I can fix them. If, if they really do bother me, uh, it's a pretty easy thing to do to go and get it fixed pretty much anywhere. Uh, but with a ceramic case, they're not shatterproof. In fact, they can chip and shatter and all, all kinds of uh, interesting ways of destruction that would require proper service by the manufacturer. And uh, that means losing your watch for a few weeks at a time or a few months at a time. And I wasn't ready to sign up for that necessarily at first, but it, you know, it just, it got me, it got to me. It looks so cool. And really, it was a really shallow purchase. <laughs> it wasn't It wasn't like, well, I eventually came around and I learned that ceramic is fine. No, it wasn't that. It just looked super cool and I, I needed it. All right. So in terms of specifications, this watch features a 41 millimeter diameter ceramic case with a titanium case back. It has a lug to lug of 50 millimeters and a lug width of 20 millimeters. That perfect size for changing out to whatever strap you'd like. It's powered by the IWC 32110, which is a fairly well decorated movement with a Cote de Genève and Perlage, but you won't be able to see it because not only is it underneath a titanium case back with the Top Gun logo, not the Top Gun movie again, but the, the school, but it's also underneath a soft iron inner case for protection against magnetic fields. The movement is self-winding with a power reserve of 72 hours, a frequency of 28,800 vibrations per hour. So it is a beautiful high beat movement. The crystal is sapphire with a thick layer of AR coating. You can very much tell that it's a blue AR coating by the, the glint of blue that you see as you move it in the light. And the glass is secured against displacement by a drop in air pressure because, hey, if you're a pilot, you might care about that if you need to eject. Because I'm sure if I had to eject... That would be what I'm worried about. I'd be worried, you know, oh, I'm ejecting. I hope my watch is going to be OK. I hope the crystal doesn't pop off and expose the dial to the heat from the explosion behind me. Yeah, probably not. Um, but anyway, this it's a beautiful crystal, beautiful execution of everything here. In terms of water resistance, it does have a screw down crown, but it only offers a six bar or 60 meters water resistant, which I think is going to be OK. Again, if you're a pilot, uh, you're hopefully not having a water landing and not having to exercise that water resistance. So I'm kind of okay with that given the concept of the watch. This watch does feature loom, but surprisingly it's not on all of the numerals. It's not on all of the uh, indices there. You'll find it basically only at the 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, and of course, nine o'clock. Um, the handset is very well loomed, whereas the dial was kind of pad printed on. So the, the loom in the handset, it's filling the handset. The loom on the dial was kind of dropped on by a pad printer, so it's not as bright as the handset. And again, like we saw with the Navitimer 8, this IWC Top Gun does not have a loomed second hand. I really wish the second hand was loomed. Not going to be the case here. This one actually does have some staying power, though. I was, uh, you know, kind of worried when I saw that it's just kind of pad printed on the dial that I'm not going to be able to see it for very long because usually there's not as much loom there. But they did a good job with it. Uh, it actually does stay for quite a while. Now, there is something to be said about the just pure legibility of the dial. It is a Flieger style watch, which is trying to be highly legible. In fact, this one fully lives up to that style in its black color as well for the highest level of contrast. Now, looking at the three o'clock there, which, yes, I did set the date to the three. So it's a one, two, three, four still. Uh, it is a date window that is very nicely integrated into the design of the watch. The font looks correct. Uh, the date uh, wheel is actually black, the same matte black as the dial. So it just, it's seamless in there. I think it would look weird if they actually added a border around the date window with this one. I'm going to, I'm going to basically not complain about that. In this case, it is uh, just very well executed. The fonts are sharp. The lettering is crisp. The printing is perfect. So all around, is this a good pick? Well, for me, it is. For me, I could justify the price. I said, you know, this watch, it just looks so cool. I don't care, uh, you know, how I have to justify it. I'm, I'm going to have to buy it because I'll always be kicking myself later if I don't. Uh, now, the, the price, again, is a lot more than the other IWC Pilot watches. And uh, I think it is worth it when you consider the movement that's there, unless you're looking at the Spitfire and you're saying I have a smaller wrist. Well, then maybe the Spitfire is right for you. Uh, this will have different case material there, but um, 
I, I think it is worth the price once you consider uh, its relative price to the rest of the line, the better movement. And then, of course, its connection to that flight school, which has become iconic in popular culture. And beyond popular culture, they were instrumental in improving the capabilities of the nation's fighter pilots. So for me, it's a good pick. For you, it might be. Maybe you're saying I can't justify it. I don't like ceramic or, or whatever else, but I love this watch. It, it just looks so cool. It really does. And uh, I'm going to stick by that. So that's all for this time. Uh, thank you for watching Nick's Picks Watch Reviews. I hope you enjoyed watching this one as much as I enjoyed making it. And uh, if you could subscribe, because right now I'm looking at the stats. We have about 5% of the viewers actually subscribed. That means 95% at this point have probably never even heard of this channel. They're like, what is this guy? Why is he still talking at me? Uh, hit the subscribe button. I'll talk at you some more. I'll say more words every week or so, you know, as my schedule allows. And uh, we can talk watches. It'll be fun. All right. So for now, take care. Have a great day. If you like this episode, please be sure to subscribe to both this channel and the About Time channel. Give this video a like and hit that notification bell to be notified about future episodes. Highway to the danger zone. <laughs>